Bernie Sanders is facing his first attack ad from a super PAC. We're going to dive into that and what impact that it may have. We're joined by Team Rising to break it down. Niambi Carter is an assistant professor of political science at Howard University and author of American While Black. And Patrice Onwuka, senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum. Two great friends of the show. I'm so glad that you guys Good are here. Good morning. So, we, you know, we've been predicting this for quite a long time, that there would be some dark money that starts getting thrown at Sanders as he begins to rise. This is the first one that we've actually seen. Let's take a listen. We'll get both of your reaction as to whether it's effective. The most important thing is we have to beat Trump. We've seen the damage that Trump and the Republican Congress have done. I doubt if Bernie Sanders can beat Trump. I like Bernie. I think he has great ideas. But Michigan, Pennsylvania, Iowa, they're just not going to vote for a socialist. I do have some concerns about Bernie Sanders' health, considering the fact that he did have a heart attack. I think it's very important that the Democrats nominate somebody that can beat Trump. I don't feel as though Bernie Sanders would do well against Donald Trump. I just don't think Bernie can beat Trump. Interesting. I mean, Niambi, I know you're no fan of Bernie or, or haven't been in the past. What do you think of that ad? I mean, it's, it is squarely centered at the notion that he's unelectable. Do you agree with that, or what do you generally make of this thing? Well, I mean, I yeah. think this is what we start to see when we see a candidate start to surge in the yeah, polls. I mean, is. and right now he's locked in a dead heat with, with Joe Biden, so I think these things are to be expected, and they went after two of the biggest things, primarily mm -hmm. his age and the fact that they don't think right. in a head-to-head -head that he will be able to get Trump. So do you think it's effective, though? That's the real question. Um, I think for I don't think it is. I don't yeah. know that it will be. Certainly not for people who are already into mm -hmm. um, into Bernie Sanders. And let me be clear, I'm not yeah. against him. Right. But for those yeah. who are already, it won't do anything for them. But those people who are maybe thinking about him, who may be on the margins, mm -hmm. perhaps it will sway them to think, yeah. you know, this man is in his upper 70s. Maybe well, he's not. Ryan, so, you pointed out about the board of this group in particular. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. important. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is the group is called... Um, what is Democrat majority for a majority for Israel, for Israel or something? Yeah, Israel. Those those words are in there. I don't there. remember Israel having anything to do. Uh, it's, Israel's not right, yeah. remotely yeah. there. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's the, the first kind of Jewish front runner yeah. for the Democratic mm. nomination point, that, that this allegedly mm. pro-Israel group. Paul Begala is on the board of this organization. Mm. So you have a CNN mm. pundit and a, a big big wig mm. in the Democratic Party mm -hmm. who's running a dark money ad against the Democratic uh, front runner. Um, Patrice, do you think that CNN will have to disclose something yeah, about right. this relationship? <laughs> it point. would be nice if they did, and, they and I think they yeah, should, but yeah, shameless. I don't think they're going to yeah. do that. Yeah. So I you mean, say, Paul, what do you think of the race? Yeah. <laughs> well, some real damaging <laughs> ads. <laughs> I happen to know one. You know, yeah. you know, I mean, I think it's 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 an interesting ad because it in, injects two really interesting pieces, not just the uh, the health piece, mm -hmm. but also the socialism piece. Mm -hmm. One person drops that and says, this is not going to work in some of these these states. Socialism, and again, I think, it, uh, back to your original point, it ties to those people who are not Bernie Sanders, you know, bros. They are right. bought in, and they're already, and they're those people who are Biden hardcores. Mm -hmm. It's those people in the middle who say, well, is this too much for our country too soon to follow the socialism? path, or is his age really going to be something that they yeah. need to worry about? Yeah. And the Sanders, the, the, the Bernie Sanders campaign really never dealt well with his heart attack. Mm -hmm. I well, mean, they've proven, yeah, you, they, they just put him on I mean, the campaign. He did surge, right? He like surged, afterwards. and he's yeah. done really well. He's been vigorous on the campaign yeah. trail, which is nice, but I think there's still something there in the back of people's yeah. minds. So mm -hmm. it's possible, yeah. Go yeah for people who are kind of new to the campaign yeah. season, ads like this are focus grouped and, and pulled mm -hmm. to death. And so the, right. the words that you're seeing in that 30 seconds are, are precisely tailored to match Absolutely. polling yeah. that people have done. So clearly they, they, they polled and the, the voters that they're targeting react to heart attack, uh, socialism, and can't mm -hmm. beat Trump. Yeah. Now the problem that they're gonna have, I think, and I'm gonna get your take on this, mm -hmm. Niambi, when you say that somebody can't beat Trump, is unelectable, and then they win Iowa, mm -hmm. people conflate yeah. winning primaries with being a winner, even right. though just because you win a Democratic primary in Iowa doesn't necessarily mean you beat Trump in the general, but in people's minds, the person becomes a winner because they just won. So do you think that could kind of undermine the argument that he's not electable if he starts winning elections? Well, for for sure, for the folks who support him, it'll absolutely undermine that argument. What are the people article? in the middle that they're but kind of going for? I don't know. I mean, I definitely think Iowa's an important signal. So is New Hampshire, so is Nevada. And it's, mm -hmm. it's projected that Bernie could win all three of those. And if he does, I think these things will become mm -hmm. less concerning for people because, let's be clear, we don't have a president who's had the greatest track record on health. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that'll be that effective of an argument. I think you're line. right. And I think Nevada in particular is the key because that is a Latino state. Mm -hmm. So that is the first time, because everybody right now, a lot of the media is like, oh, 
oh, well, he only does well among, among white people. He does do well among white people, but he's also, I think, what, highest, am highest amongst African Americans under the age of 35. Yeah. And amongst Latinos is actually tied almost with Biden in California wow. and in uh, Nevada. But Patrice, I want to get your take on this, which is that in that they say that socialism can't win in the Midwestern states. The interesting thing, though, and I've been tracking this, which is that Trump has come out and said that he was most afraid of Sanders and that he thinks he got about 20 percent of Sanders voters because of the trade issue alone. And we know that trade is mm. especially localized to those areas deindustrialized in the Midwest. So I actually kind of disagree with the central premise about that because I don't think voters are looking at it as socialism. They're like, this guy was against a trade deal. They, I mean, they can look at the factory in their yeah. town. They're like, that factory went away because of NAFTA, mm -hmm. because of Joe. That's a very mm -hmm. easy attack. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you make of that, about how that dynamic would go? Because I totally disagree with well, that. Well, we now have yeah. USMCA signed, right. right? Today, I believe it is. So yeah, I, I think it yeah. takes the air out of that balloon yeah. around uh, President Trump hurting Midwest farmers. Farmers, hurting sure. small businesses in the in the center of the country to the socialism argument. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it depends on how you define socialism, which yeah. I think is a challenge with the polling. Some people just think it's oh, big government, cuddly feely, will yes. help take care of some of my immediate needs. But if it's if it's well you know, making sure that businesses are have some sort of soft cushioning, then maybe that's appealing. Still, I, I don't think that there are a lot of Americans who hear socialism, particularly above a certain age range, above 35, who, who embrace it. Because I think they recognize that that is actually less about the free market, less about their small businesses, and more about the heavy hand of government. It's around Gen X whenever the generational yes. yeah. Yeah. To kick in, exactly. I think. And I mean, that's the real question. 40 now. But you know, Niambi, Sanders, he's driving a whole lot of new people into the system, right? right? I mean, so like, we'll see if they turn out, right? They're enthusiastic yeah. now, so yeah. we'll sure. see if they turn out. And I think that's the, the thing. But I think he will have to reframe mm. that socialism argument because there are lots of things that are socialist that people like, mm. like more extended maternity leaves, sure. right? Like health care. So people secure. like, exactly, people mm. like lots of things that are socialist. But I think there is something very American about how we understand socialism, to Patricia's earlier point, yeah. which is that people think of it as scary. We think of communism, right? Those mm. things are joined in people's minds. We think of Soviet repression. We think of lots Venezuela. of things. Exactly. Yeah. And we see it as, as, as a sort of pill, uh, pillaging of, of our society. And of well, our, I and remember our the same people. attacks being leveled against Trump, being like, oh, he's a progressive, whatever. He's departing from GOP war. It's like, well, it turns out the voters like it. Right. You know, it's like, turns out, well, the voters don't agree with NAFTA or TPP mm -hmm. or any of these other things. You know what that is. Um, and so that is really where I think the central tension is going to be. All right, guys, thank you uh, so much. Stick with us. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.